culture today is asking a question. Is long-term marriage relationship even possible? Is a long-term marriage relationship even possible? And I understand that when we are in a church that we understand that there are all kinds of different marriage backgrounds, all kinds of different marriages. Many times we've been married for many years, and sometimes we've been married many times. So the issue today that we're going to talk about on this Valentine is not necessarily marriage, but it's talking about how to keep marriage, how to keep that relationship. And we could look at this relationship, or we could look at any relationships. We come into a any relationships with baggage. Uh, baggage is anything that you bring with you. And whether you uh, have had a previous marriage, or maybe it's the relationship that you've had with your parents, watching your parents grow up in, in their interaction within their marriage relationship, we have a preconceived idea of what marriage could be like and what marriage is going to be like because of what we have seen, what we have firsthand watched. And if we haven't really seen a good marriage model, then it's very hard to walk into a model relationship without having some sort of idea of what we need to do or how we can handle certain things. So we do need to look at a committed marriage relationship to understand what marriage is all about and, and what we can do within the marriage relationship. The wisest man that ever lived, and he wrote the book of Proverbs, Song of Solomon, and he said this in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. I like what he says, above all else. I'm about ready to tell you something that's going to be so important. I've tried everything. I've had, I've had money. I've had wealth. I've had um, females. I've had all the popularity they ever want. He goes, and all that stuff that I've had is vanity. It's not worth it. But this is one thing I'm going to tell you. Above everything else, guard your heart. Because everything out of your heart, your life flows. And if you can't guard your heart, now the word guard means a protection. What is it that can hurt your heart? What is it that, that can come in and damage you or damage your relationship? Could be your heart. So there's two aspects in this relationship that we're going to talk about. The first aspect is monitor, monitoring your heart. We have to monitor your heart. And the second thing is we don't do sometimes is monitor our spouse's behavior. It's easy to monitor my spouse or your spouse's behavior. Because if I can monitor that, and I don't like what she does or what he does, it's easy for me to say, you need to stop doing it. Quit doing that, because it's not making me happy. So I can monitor somebody, and I can tell them what they need to or what they should not be doing, because it's easy for me to see what they are doing. But before we can monitor somebody else's condition, we first have to monitor our heart, our life, my actions. So I, I brought a couple friends with me. Mr. and Mrs. Beads. Mr. and Mrs. Beads are here. And they're full of beads, of course. So Mr. and Mrs. Beads got married right outside of college. And Mr. Beads had this awesome job. He was making all kinds of money. He was, the, he was the catch of the school. Well, Mrs. Beads, she was a hot girl, and she had everything at her disposal. So they looked at each other, and they said, wow, we are made for each other. We have it. We have the chemistry. We fell in love. And it took them about five days to fall in love. And they fell head over heels in love. They fell in head over heels in love so much when they said, let's get married. And they said, we don't need marriage counseling because we are in love. Well, they got married. And within three months after marriage, guess where they were? They were in marriage counseling. They were totally at each other's. They were hitting each other. And the beads, they were just falling all over the place. And they were mad. And they said, you know what? I don't understand it. Every time, every time we get in a fight, you make these 
beads come out of me. My, my anger beads keep on coming out of me. And she says, yeah, but every time you say that, my jealousy beads come out of me. Every time, every time we fight, we just get so mad, beads all over the place. And they say, why, why do we do that? She said, if you, wouldn't, if you would quit fighting me, if you wouldn't cause me to get jealous, well, if you wouldn't make me so mad, I wouldn't have all these beads coming over me. I was good until you got into my life. And you got these beads all over me, and I am sick and tired of these beads or these things coming out of my life, and I never get mad until you got into my life. Well, I thought you loved me. I do love you. But if you would just shut up every once in a while, if you would quit fighting me, if you would quit making me jealous, I wouldn't lose all my emotions. So they were married for three months. Guess what they said? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if this is going to work. It took them three days to want to get married. They didn't work on their marriage. They thought the lust of the heart is going to bring on the love of their life. And they didn't realize that once they got married, they're going to have to sit down and do a checkbook together. Mm. They're going to have to lay in bed together and wake up in the morning together. Whew, really? I, I thought you went to bed all kind of pretty, and you wake up uh, kind of, it's an eye-opening experience, and I didn't expect that. And, uh, and I have to understand that you're going to not be pretty all the time, and there's going to understand that you're going to lose your temper, and you know what? I, you don't cook like mom, and, and you know, mom used to do it this way, and my dad used to do this way. We start arguing about everything that we wanted out of life, and the, the, the desire stage was so overwhelming, but yet all of a sudden, because we love each other, we know we're committed to each other, and it, isn't it weird, the ones that we're committed to the most are the ones that we fight with the most, right? Because until we fought, we loved each other. Oh, let's go to a movie tonight. Let's watch TV tonight. Let's cuddle by the fireplace. And all of a sudden, the cuddling by the fireplace and watching a movie wasn't near as fun because she keeps, would you quit hitting me? All you do is, and you get so frustrated. So down the road, well, I don't want to get a divorce. So what do we do? Do we cohabitate? We have little kids in the house. Do we just live together? Do we act like we're married? Or what do we do? So Mr. and Mrs. Beads, they went to counseling. They should have gone premarital, but they said, we're not going to go premarital because we don't know it, we don't need it because we're in love. But once they were in love and they fought and they understood that the beads and life was going in and out, they said, we, we're going to make this thing happen, so what do we need to do? So they sit in the, in the counselor's office, and they said this. They said, he just makes me so mad. Well, she makes me so jealous. Every time she says that, she knows what buttons to push, and she pushes that button, and when she pushes that button, I just get mad. I, it just explodes all over me. And then she would say, I never got mad until you started doing this. And when you started doing this, everything fell apart. So if you're going to do that, I had to get even with you. So you said something, I had to say something else. And the counselor said, stop it. Time out. Do you know why you do that? Do you know why you get mad? Do you know why you guys click all the time? And they said, no, because of her. If she would shut up. I wouldn't get mad. If he wouldn't do that, I wouldn't get mad. And every time he does that, I get mad. Every time she says something, I get mad. And our marriage is over because they won't leave each other alone. And the counselor says, nope. Try again. They look at him and say, well, what are you talking about? Try again. If she would leave me alone, if he wouldn't do this, we would be fine. And the counselor said, you know why your blue beads come out of your life? Because the blue beads are your life. Do you know why the pink beads come out of your life? Because the pink beads are your life. 
you are not making the blue beads come out of his life. The blue beads are coming out of his life because that's what's in his life. You may be something that's irritated him, but if the anger, the depression, the insecurities, if they weren't in there at the first time, they're not going to come out during the time of fighting and arguing. He said, so you guys aren't causing the ble- beads to come out. The beads are in there. So what comes out of our life is what has already been in our life. So we have to understand, we have to pay attention to the deep things of our life. Now, why do we have these things within our life? Why Men would say, men would say I get, I'm mad. I'm just, I'm just frustrated. I'm just, I'm, I, I, I don't know, I'm just frustrated. I, I don't want to talk about it. Amen, guys? I just don't want to talk about it. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't, I, I don't understand. It. And then women would say, oh, let me, let me tell you what I think. <laughs> can, you, can you put down the remote? Uh, I, 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 I lowered it a little bit. Put down the remote. Okay, and then we start fighting again. They talk about emotions. We are not emotional people. So the fight of emotions starts coming into conflict because we don't talk about the issues. And men are really terrible about this, but not, the one thing that we have to do is we, we have to stop and think about what causes our emotions. What causes them? What is it deep down inside of us that cause those emotions? Now, we're very aware that any marriage relationship that two people come into that relationship with a healthy, mature heart that has not had baggage and scars can make a marriage relationship work. So if you take two individuals that have lived the utopia life, that the parents were perfect, and the, they went to all their kids' ball games, and they went to all the recitals, and they gave them encouragement, and gave them love, and gave them affirmation, and everything was perfect seven days a week, and that's what they saw in their mom, and that's what they saw in their dad, and they both had that, and they come into the marriage relationship, and they said, Oh, this is heaven. Marriage is going to be perfect. But guess what? It didn't happen. Our parents failed us. Your parents failed you. But we can't take our parents' fault at our express and say, I can't be who I need to be because I didn't see it in the past. We have to say, this is who I am. This is what I am. And I have to deal with my issues straight at hand. So we have to call our feelings by name. We have to see, what is it? I can't go no longer just say, ah, I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm mad. Well, everybody gets mad, and everybody gets frustrated. So I believe what we have to do is we have to identify your emotion. Now, this is liberating. When I say identify, all the women are going to say, praise Jesus. And all the men are going to say, I can't believe you just did this. But this is true. Identify your emotions. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. Well, why? I sound sound like my wife. Why? Why are you mad? Why are you frustrated? Well, there are some times of emotions that uh, the majority of us men come through that we... Uh, talk about the first one that we talk about and the first one on the list is anger we have no problem dealing with the anger anybody give me an amen on anger we we have the anger issue down right we can do the anger anger and we are so so emotional anger is our only release outlet of i can say i'm angry because a man is supposed to be angry and a man is supposed to be able to do that and i'm going to show my emotion because i'm mad well there's other things you know i may be angry because i'm embarrassed I'm embarrassed that I can't do what somebody else can do. I'm embarrassed that I may not have what somebody else has, and I'm embarrassed that you may find out that I'll never be able to accomplish that, and maybe I'm just embarrassed when you bring that up that maybe you're going to figure me out, and I'm just embarrassed, and men aren't supposed to be embarrassed. So what I do is I try to mask my embarrassment with anger so maybe you'll change the topic and maybe I can move on. And sometimes men will just say, man, I'm just unappreciated. 
I work every day, and I know you work, and I know we're, we're, we have two income families, but, you know, sometimes I just wish you would say thanks. Thanks for bringing home the paycheck. Thanks for going to the kids' games. Thanks for picking the kids up. And this is a two-way street. Sometimes we just need to be known that we are appreciated. And sometimes I look in the mirror, and the reason why I'm mad is I'm 51 years old now. I, I, I don't look like I did when I was 18 years anymore. And sometimes I just kind of get depressed and get thinking I'm kind of not the man I used to be. So sometimes I just get depressed. I think I'm ugly. I think I'm not there anymore. So you're looking at me and I'm looking at myself and sometimes I just get depressed because I really don't think I'm as attractive or as good looking as I used to be and it causes a depression and sometimes those are hard to talk about but sometimes in our marriage relationship why we say I'm mad has no reason to buy what we're mad we have to deal with why we're mad maybe I just feel like I'm unlovable maybe I feel like I've hurt you too much and I've done too much and maybe I've crossed too many bridges and maybe you don't know all the bridges that I've crossed and maybe I'm just flat unlovable if you knew everything about me you wouldn't want me so I'm just going to keep you at arm's bay and I'm going to say I'm unlovable maybe I just feel stupid maybe I just feel stupid you told me I've been stupid a couple times you told me I'm not intelligent you told me I can't do this and I can't do the kids algebra three and I can't do their geometry and and I just feel stupid and I don't know how else to respond except for man that's all I know but honestly, I feel stupid or I feel insecure. I feel insecure because I, I don't know what else to do. So out of my insecurities, I feel frustrated or I'm just angry. Or maybe I felt abandoned. Mom and dad got a divorce and I'm waiting for you to say you're leaving me. So how I control that is I control you by my anger so you won't leave me. But the more mad I get, the further away you want to be. So I feel like I'm abandoned, and I feel like you're going to abandon me, and I'm trying to hold on. I try to wrap my rope around your neck, and I try to pull you so tight. I try to keep you so tight. I do it by control. I try to do everything I can do to keep you right beside me because I feel like I'm going to be abandoned, and I am scared to death to be alone. So how I respond to that is anger. I'm just scared. Or maybe at work I feel like I'm being picked on. Maybe I'm, I feel like that I'm not respected at work and they're laughing at me because I can't do the job that they think I should do and I'm just being picked on. Or disrespected. Maybe I feel like I'm out of control in life. Maybe I have some issues, some some vices in my life that I feel like I'm out of control on and I don't know how to deal with those issues so I just respond with anger and all boils down to how I respond and the biggest response to that is the hardest emotion to see in ourselves but the easiest to see in your spouse is jealousy I'm I'm jealous I'm jealous I'm jealous of your time. And the Bible, we call it legitimate jealousy because God is a jealous God. And anything that takes time away from us and you give it to somebody else, I want that time. So I'm going to be jealous because somebody else is doing what I want to do. So I'm going to be jealous. And the only way that I'm going to get you back is if I get mad at what you're doing. So you'll quit doing that so you can have me. So the jealousy aspect takes place. And I am just mad. That's, that's, I'm just mad. But no, we're not just mad. The greatest thing that we can do with our spouse and with others is if we can name the emotion that is butting heads with each other. Because it's not just anger. It could be the jealousy. Or it could be the insecurities. Now, do you remember back in the city pool days where they had that slide that goes down into the water and you go up about 12 steps and, and you get on top of the slide and you go down? And there's about 10 to 12 steps that go up there. How many of you guys have ever been on one of those? 
Everybody, all the kids have been. Okay, okay, here's the deal with anger management. This is anger management 101. If, you, if somebody ever court appoints you and say, you need to go to anger management, you say, I already went. I went Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, okay? So here's anger management 101. You guys get in a knockdown, drag out fight. The normal person, they can go up 10 flights of stairs to get on the slipper slide and to slide down and land in the water. Ha, ah, it's fun. But somebody that has anger issues, Somebody taps them. Somebody says something to them. They get on that slide, and they book up. They remember step one and step two, but they don't remember four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They remember getting on the slide and going down the slide and hating every bit of it, but going to get even while they're doing it. And then when they get to the bottom of the pool, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. They meant to do it. At the moment they tried to do it, the anger was so overwhelmed within them, they were going to get even, they're going to say, they're going to do whatever they want. But once it's over, they look back, and because of their anger, their depression and insecurity sets in, they're not upset anymore of the point. Now they're embarrassed of how they responded or what they said. Anger. When we look at the beads... Mr. and Mrs. Beads. Took them about three days to fall in love. Took about three years to ask for a divorce. You know how long it's going to take to be fixed? It's a lifetime. Marriage is the number one hardest thing you will ever do. Why is that? By our nature, we do not want to be vulnerable. By our nature, we do not want to be honest. By our nature, we think, I can fix it. By our nature, we are sin-filled individuals. Guard your hearts. The person that you love, the person that you respect is the person that wants you for who you are. You said in the counseling session in premarital, we said, and said let's, let's, let's talk about your aspirations. Let's, let's talk about your dreams. Let's, let, what do you want 10 years from now? What do, you want, what do you want 20 years from now? And they're sitting on the love seat and their arms are around each other. Oh, we want to we wanna buy a little house and have a car and have three little kids and have money in the bank. We want to we wanna go on trips. And everything is like, Atopia life and everything's wonderful and great and they have a dream and have a vision that's premarital that's awesome three years later Josh how long have you been married oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to pick on you uh, three, a little after they get married they come back in the office and they said he didn't tell me about this he didn't tell me about that he didn't tell me he did this he didn't tell me about that and the dream staged turns into a nightmare instead of the utopia because at the state of honesty, before the relationship became so chaotic, they started grinding on each other, hating on each other, fighting with each other, doing everything, and all of a sudden, speeds go all over the place. And now they end up with an empty marriage. An empty marriage. They sit back, and they look at each other. Where did our life go? The thing that I loved about you the most, it's empty. The person who you are, you're a shell of who you used to be. And we could sit there and say, but you caused it. If you wouldn't have done that, but the counselor says, they didn't cause the problem. The problem was already inside you. What we have to do is we have to control us. You cannot control your spouse. You cannot control what and when he does things. All you can do is control yourself. And the counselor would say, the beads came out of you because the beads were in you. We have to make sure that we love each other enough 
that we know when I push that button right there, beads are going to pop out. But guess what? I love you enough, I'm not going to touch you there. Because if I don't touch you there, those beads aren't going to pop out. And I know that if I hug you, those beads are going to stay in there. And if I know I give you affirmation, those beads are going to stay in there. If I tell you you're the prettiest woman in the room, those beads are going to stay in there. If you tell me you're a great worker and I can't believe how, how much you do, you give me courage and you give me confidence, my beads are going to stay in there. We have a decision to make. Are we going to push the beads or are we going to help the beads? Are we going to keep a marriage or are we going to throw the marriage away? Everybody wants a wonderful marriage or they wouldn't have gotten married. Why is it that we get married and all of a sudden we start fighting? It's because we're not prepared to keep the beads within our life. The Bible says, above all else, guard your heart. The root and the seat of emotion. And in a marriage relationship, above all else, guard your heart. So how do we do that? Sometimes we have to find out, well, this is a, this is a bead of jealousy. Oh, this is a blue bead of jealousy. I, I wonder how I could turn this thing around and make this a pink bead. Can't. This is a, a Bruce bead. Bruce is jealous. How can I throw it at her? I need to make her own it. If I make her own it, I won't be jealous anymore, right? I'll, it's her fault. If, if, if I could just get her to take all my beads, I'll be okay. And everybody will look at her. But you know what I had to realize? This is my bead. The jealousy bead. This is a Bruce bead. I'm jealous. It's not a marriage relationship issue. It's a me issue. And until I understand that Bruce Thomas has issues, and I have to control my issues, and I can say, I'm jealous. I'm jealous for all kinds of different reasons, and it's my bead. Guess what happens to that bead? When I look at the emotion, I call it what it is, I accept it, and I put it back in my life. I have taken the power of Satan out of my life because it is exposed. And the Bible says when we Expose it to the light. Satan has to flee. I can take my life in my failures, in my insecurities, in my downfalls, and I can look at it and say, Lord, I am. I am jealous, Lord. I need you to forgive me. I need you to work within me. I am accepting that. I am not going to blame her for my faults. And I'm going to tell her, this is me. I am no longer going to blame you for my faults. I accept it. And tell me, let me tell you what a very intelligent, mature woman would say. Thank you. Thank you. I am not going to push that button any longer. Thank you for admitting, loving me, and now that I know what it is, I'm going to treat you with respect and honor, and I'm going to accept it. And in that constant relationship, there's going to be a time that a pink bead is going to pop up. And because you said, I had, a, I had a issues within my life, of, and I, I was honest with you, I'm controlling and I have jealousy issues, and I, I, I was honest. And Because you're honest in your life, something comes up and she gets mad and she claims her bead. 
She would never be honest with you until you first are open and honest with her. All of the junk in life is all around you. You're emotionally spent. Your marriage is over. You have two choices. Work on it or walk out on it. Work on it or walk out on it. And you know the issue. 50% of the people walk out. And it doesn't have to be that way. And I understand there are all kinds of issues and there's all kinds of things that take place within a marriage relationship and God's going to forgive it and God's going to love it and God's going to move on from it and he's going to restore you and he's going to give you every desire that you have within your heart. But in this relationship that you're in, in this next relationship that you're in, when you have beads in your life and you have conflict going on with your life, you first have to say, why? Why do I have the conflict? What is my emotion? Can I own it? And can I communicate about it? Because until we can do those things, what we're going to do is we're going to continue. And sooner or later, the marriage will crash. It may not be today. It may not be five years from now. You may be 50, 60, 70 years old. But if we don't learn how to deal with the emotions inside our marriage, the marriage will not work. You can cohabitate. You don't have to sign the papers. But you do not have what God wants you to have in a loving, godly, healthy heart of a marriage relationship. You got to name it. You got to see what I'm upset about. You got to own it. You can't throw it at somebody else and pick and fight and push and prod. So you know what? That's mine. I'm that way. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And a loving relationship says, you're forgiven. I am sorry. Let's move on. That is when a healthy relationship takes place. Let's bow our heads. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for your love and your guidance within our life and Lord, in our relationships, I pray that you will allow us to own it and take care of it and honor us by us being mature and taking a broken heart that we have gotten through all kinds of different issues within life and heal us and keep us whole. Restore to us the very joys of our salvation, the health of our hearts and the health of our life. And Lord, where there's marriages, where there's relationships, and they're struggling, and they're falling, I pray that today could just give a glimpse of how we can own and love each other with a pure heart, taking ownership of our emotions and our outbursts, and putting them in check, and honoring you in every aspect. Lord, be with us today. In Jesus' name we do pray.